Hello? Hello, I'm back and I'm really hoping you guys can hear me and see me. Can we all see me and hear me? Right. right, give me two seconds. I'm going to now send, hopefully, Shane a link. Uh, right, Shane. Shane, I am sending you a link now. Please tell me you've got this. Please. So, this is fun, isn't it? Whew, don't think I've set up the camera so quickly in my life. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Anybody there? Oh, we've got three views. Um, and full screen, I can't see, show your screen, no. Anybody there? So, um, I'm just trying to wait for Shane, hopefully. I sent you a link, Shane. Um, hope you get it. Anyone else hear me? Can give me a thumbs up, hello, something like that. That'd be great. Oh, we got. I am again. He he. Yay! Hello, hello. So, oh, oh, what's happening? Things are happening. Just waiting. Oh, oh, oh! I had it. Had it. Hold on. Accept. Go on. Work. Work. Yes. Uh, I can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? Hold on. Can you hear me? Oh, it was a bit of a delay. Hang on. Hold on. Amazing. Gonna, we got you there. Finally. The end. Yeah. Finally. I'm going to close. I'm going to try to close something because. Okay. Are we good? Say again? Okay, yeah, I think so. Just wondering because I can hear. Are we like on time type thing? Because I can hear like you like four, five seconds ago. Is it like echoing? Yeah, I think we're going to be good. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Hold on. I'm not sure. I am. Um... Is that any better? I think so. Yeah? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can no, hear perfect. you. No, perfect. I was just looking, while well, we we're trying to get through all this stuff, and I, I kind of gave up on trying to figure out how to connect. I started looking at castles in uh, in uh, London. <laughs> I was always, like, infatuated with, like, the, the historical castles that you have over in London and all around. So, yeah, I'll take a look at some castles. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's so, like you say, really echoey. Oh, I don't but know. we'll try and see how we get on, yeah? Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay, so thank you so, so much for coming back on to do this interview again. At least we have sound and everything this time. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> No worries. It's funny though because, like, I was after we did the interview last uh, earlier in the was it early in the week? Yeah, earlier in the week or last week. I can't remember. Um, I was thinking like, oh, I should have said this. I should have said that. Oh, I could have said that. But so that's always sorry. the way, isn't it? So we'll just go through the questions again, if that's okay, like we did last time, and just go through it. Yep. Cool. So what conditions do you have? 
Um, the condition I have is um, I have a spinal cord. I have I suffered a spinal cord injury, a T12 incomplete. So just around your belly button. Now incomplete meaning that my spinal cord wasn't totally severed in half. Um, I did have a banana. I was going to give a demonstration of a banana, but I ended up eating it. So I can't do that now. But uh, so basically, instead of having my, my spine, the nerves totally lacerated and disconnected, cut, I had a compressional uh, fracture, which actually just kind of squished the nerves. So the yeah. nerves were damaged, but still connected in certain ways. So some signals are still able to get down. So being incomplete, I'm able to have movement uh below my 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 injury so i have some leg movement i got some uh, i regained some muscle and strength and uh so i am able to i'm very lucky because i am able to stand up and, and walk with forearm crutches uh with um, afos on my my feet to keep my ankles at 90 degrees so very very lucky that way and even go a little bit further how i I uh, suffered my spinal cord injuries. I was in the fall uh, back in 1998, being foolish, young and reckless with some friends, coming home from the bar, walking across the uh, bridge, and I leaned over the rail too far, and being yeah. under the influence of alcohol, loss of judgment, lack of judgment, I leaned over too far, and I ended up flipping over and be landing in between railroad tracks. So that's how I ended up with spinal cord, my spinal cord injury. Wow, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's scary. And then, like I said, I don't remember a thing coming. You know, the last thing I remember that night was leaving the bar. And yeah. then I woke, I woke up uh, a week later <clears throat> because I was put into an induced coma uh, due to the swelling in my brain. They had it and, and pain as well, I guess. So they put me in an induced coma. And then, uh, yeah, it was a week later I woke up. Surprise. <laughs> oh. It's a, it's a good job that you don't remember it really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I am actually thankful that I don't remember that because yeah. I do know, I have quite a few friends that had have had some pretty horrific accidents which left them uh, paralyzed or head injury or with, um, you know, a, a missing limb and they remember the accident and they remember the pain and it's just, yeah, I'm so, okay, thanks, I'm glad, thank you for sparing me that. Oh, how does your, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit hearing you because it's oh. kind of doubling. Is. Um, but how does your condition affect you physically and mentally? Physically, um, like I'm bound to a wheelchair. Like I use a wheelchair pretty much full time um, just because walking it takes a lot longer to get to point A from point A to point B when I'm walking with forearm crutches. And with forearm crutches, I can't carry anything. And with the weather we have here in Canada, it's it's snowing out and it's raining and there's, there's ice buildup. Walking with crutches is just a matter of time before I hit a patch of ice or I trip and fall and hurt myself, right? So I kind of only use the crutches when uh, I want to stand up and stretch and maybe I'll do a little walk around the house or if I need to stand up to grab something in the garage off the top shelf. Um, now mentally, I, um, uh, you know, that's one thing is really very, very lucky that I didn't really go through any kind of downward spiral when I was hurt. I was hurt at a very young age. Well, I think fairly young age, just 22 years old. When I got when I got injured, and you know when I came out of coma, I kind of accepted it right away. I just basically ah bleep, what did I do now? And I was searching for answers, obviously right away. And when I got the answers as to what happened that night, in and I took it, you know, it's totally my fault. I screwed up, but hey, I'm alive. What are we gonna do now? All right, so how am I going to, because I had plans to go to school uh, a few months before my, a uh, few months after my accident. So I was hurt in November and I was supposed to go start school in Forestry in January. And so that's out the window. So I'm like, well, what am I going to do now? So I was, had a lot of time to think about what to do. Um, like yeah. I said, I was, in, I was in the hospital for two months on bed rest. Didn't operate yeah. on me at all. 
And then I was transferred to the rehabilitation center for spinal cord and head injury patients. And I spent uh, January, February, March, April, May, four and a half months there, I think. Yeah, four and a half to five months there in rehabilitation. So I think really I, I didn't go into a downward spiral, spiral or, or get depressed or anything wow. because, well, first I was always kind of an upbeat kind of guy anyways, and, you know, happy-go-lucky. And then I had a huge support system right from day one with my family and friends, like, you know, just boom, they're right there. And then uh, I Lots started um, around here. Yeah, yeah, I had great support. And when I came to the rehabilitation center, I started meeting people, you know, kind of under the same umbrella as me, how they were hurt, not new, but like older, uh, not older people, but people have been hurt for, you know, five, 10, 15, mm. 20 years. And, uh, you know, telling me that, yeah, there's definitely life, you know, I got a full, you know, they, they have a, they went back to school, they've had full-time jobs, they've had, a fa they've had families, you know, they go four-wheeling, they go uh, skiing, they do all kinds of different things. And they showed me the, the, uh, they opened the door for adaptive sports for me, right? Because I was always very athletic growing up in, in, in team sports and hockey and baseball and you name it. And, yeah. um. So that was actually one of the things that's kind of worried about. I was like, what am I going to do for sports now? I can't go play baseball and I can't do this, can't do that. But then when I met these people and, and the therapists at the Stan Cassidy uh, Rehabilitation Center, there's like, oh, yeah, there's wheelchair basketball. There's there's a wheelchair rugby. There's this and that, cross-country sit skiing. And I was like, oh, yeah, really? So anyway, and then uh, I started meeting people who played these sports, and then I got introduced to wheelchair ball. So Physical activity, having my friends and family uh, supporting me and getting involved, back involved with, you know, physical activity, playing sports and getting back to the gym, weightlifting and exercising. That was my, that was my outlet. That was huge for helping me through my recovery. Okay. That's brilliant, isn't it? That's amazing. You've come so far. Um, how do you, what do you think your, I mean, your managing tips are to manage your condition better, if there are any? I mean, you've done quite a lot. Like better from this point on managing? Yeah. Um, I would say keeping physical, like, and I, told, I tell yeah. this to newer, newer patients, like uh, before COVID hit, I would often go into the Stan Cassidy uh, rehab center to talk to newly injured patients, right? Just to say, Hey, there is light at the end of the tunnel. You got to put your work in, you got to own up to what happened type deal and try yeah. to put it behind you and try to move forward and, and create life. Cause you can, there is life, um, in, you know, living with, uh, in, in a wheelchair. And, um, mm. so I think managing tips for me moving out forward, I would always say you need to watch your weight. You know, what if yeah. you start if you're if you're overweight, like and I had got to the point where I wasn't uh overweight at a shape overweight. I was overweight because I did a different training program where I put on uh, uh up to two uh two hundred and twenty pounds at one point and but it was kind of fit two twenty because I was train weight training in a different way. But even yeah. with that extra weight, I found moving in my wheelchair, I felt like a slug. And I felt my shoulder starting to hurt. And for me to stand up and, and walk, I just felt so much pain in my wrists, my hips, just yeah. with the extra weight. Because just typically I would weigh in like at around 195 or so, right? And then I said, no, that's no good. So then I got on a different training routine, a different eating plan. And this is years ago. And so moving forward, I have to stick to that eating plan and exercise routine to keep my weight below 200. Because once I hit the 200 mark, kind of get that way where the shoulders start hurting and blah, blah, you know, that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of, for myself, I've got to wash my weight, I've got to stay physical because that keeps me mentally, um, yeah. my mind clear. And so when I'm physically fine and my mind's clear, that comes back into my home with my family. So that helps make everything hockey dory there. So if I don't get my workout in, I get cranky. <laughs> that's, what my wife, that's what my wife tells me anyways you know, if, I, if I haven't been to the gym in two or three days or if I'm sick and I don't and I don't go to the gym she and I'm suddenly cranky she knows why it's because I haven't been to the gym or playing sport uh, yeah 
That's the biggest thing I find. <laughs> it's just weight management. Uh, I can relate to that. I mean, obviously I don't have your illnesses, but with my illnesses, it yo-yos and you can definitely feel the difference big time. Yeah. Yeah. Mentally and physically. Yeah. Oh, we've got loads of comments. I don't know if you can see the comments, uh, but... Um... Yeah, you can read them out. If there's any questions, I mean, from, from the viewers, let me know too. You can ask um, them. Hayley's put, Shane, you sound like you have done amazing. Um, Mandy's put, yes, you have. Hayley says, hi, Shane. Mandy says, hi, Shane. Shirley says, hello, Shane. Nice to see oh, you at last. She's right right in. <laughs> So everyone's saying hello. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what is one thing um, that is positive that's come out of whilst you've been ill? I mean, oh, gosh. your YouTube channel, which is brilliant. And I saw that you got a gift too. How cool is that? Yeah, I got, I got a first, uh, I, I, I called it fan mail, but it was... Uh, uh, yeah, I did a review on my new wheelchair, uh, probably about three or four months ago. And uh, one of the area reps, like in our province, like we're in, I'm in Atlanta, Canada, New Brunswick, Canada. And so there's four provinces. There's uh, New Brunswick, PEI, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland. And we're, we're way on the East Coast, so we're on the ocean. And um, we're classified categorized as the Atlantic provinces. So it must've been the Atlantic provinces rep that seen my video. And then she had went and sent me a little uh, gift bag. So it was pretty cool. I was really excited to see that. I never expected that. So, but yeah, a lot of positive has come out of my accident. Like a lot of doors opened yeah. up and that's the thing too. And the door opens up. I just, I took advantage of it. I said, yeah, why not? I'll give that a try. I played for Team Canada wheelchair basketball from 2002 yeah. to 2006. 2008 and I traveled the world playing so wheelchair amazing. basketball brilliant met some great people great people along the way and transitioned to cross-country skiing and sledge hockey and we're actually going to go to Halifax Nova Scotia tonight I'm leaving after work to go and uh, play sledge hockey in a tournament so I have to that'll be some fun we haven't oh, played in amazing. two years because of, because because of, because of COVID but I mean I went back to school when I was 20, I took the, when I was hurt, I took a full year off just to focus on me and see how far I could go with recovery. And after that year, I went back to school, uh, oh. back to work part-time and um, landed a full-time job with a public utility company here in New Brunswick, which I've been with now for 20 years. And met my wife at the Stan Cassidy at the rehabilitation center, met my wife there. She's actually, she's actually a nurse and we have two kids, two dogs, a house. And I just, I still wanted to have, you know, I still wanted to create a life. I, I had, yeah. you know, prior to my accident, I had goals and things I wanted to do. Yeah. And so this was just a bit of a setback that, you know, delayed me a little bit, but then as I carried on and, uh, with my plan or type of thing, I guess it just all worked out for me. Yeah, you've done truly amazing. Haley's asked a question. Yep. Um, she says, "How do you find traveling with public transport?" Yeah, that's um, that's challenging. I just use my own vehicle. I always have. Like once I get out of the, like yeah. once I get out of the rehab. I bought my own Jeep. Like I just went and bought a Jeep so I could get around on my own. Like where I live, we're, we're pretty remote part of the country. Like Canada's pretty remote anyways. It's so big. Um, but we're kind of remote East coasters and usually generally we're behind the times and a lot of stuff. Everything starts from the West and moves over to the East or down from the South in the United States and then moves up North and we're the last to get, <laughs> to get anything or, you know, um, now I do see in the last probably five or six years, our wow. public transit, like our buses, uh, there have, they have, Ooh. uh, wheelchair lifts now that will put you in there. 
there's some cabs now, uh, vans that'll come by that have wheelchair lifts as well to lift you up and, and put you in the back of the van for the cab. Um, I did a lot of flying um, and that was, they'd have lifts to, to put you up in the plane or ramps that you could wheel up in the plane. Uh, yeah, no a lot problem. easier now, but isn't the it? Public yeah. Yeah, but the public transit here in New Brunswick, it has come a long way. Uh, I remember one time, I'd say probably maybe 10, 15 years ago, they only had one van for wheelchair users if, if you wanted to go somewhere. And uh, it was like super expensive because it was privately, actually, so it wasn't, it wasn't owned by the, <clears throat> the city or anything. It was a, it was a private it offered, offered the service for people in wheelchairs or <clears throat> mobility issues and it was just out, outrageously expensive so anyways i never had i was lucky because i never had to use it i always use my own vehicle and if i did have to use a cab i was able to transfer out of my wheelchair and take it apart for the the cab driver and put it in the yeah. back seat type deal so very lucky that way yeah Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share? Oh gosh, I could talk forever. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around the block for a while. I'm going to you leave know. your link so um, everyone can check out your YouTube channel oh, yes. as well. Yeah, I just had to say, like, I mean, yeah, um, you know, if somebody, if, if you're already have some sort of disability impairment you know uh i guess the tip that i could say would be what how i kind of got through everything would be i take things with a grain of salt you know mm -hmm. i know most people mean well and sometimes they may come across as being uh, I, I hate this word but ignorant you know what i mean but yeah they just don't know what they don't know and uh, a lot of times people will will try to help you aggressively try to help you right open a door and and, and you're like no no i yeah. got it it's okay or sometimes uh, most times i'll just say okay no problem if you want to open the door i say yeah sure i'll let them open yeah. the door for me and then i'll go through and and say thank you very much it makes them feel good if you know they ask a lot of times i mean i had one gentleman just all of a sudden come behind my chair and start pushing me up this like a really small incline to get the store and of course not expecting it i don't have the greatest balance nice he jolted me and i i almost fell out of my chair and i was like whoa what are you doing dude and he's like oh i'm going to be a push i was like well and i kind of let him know i was like you need to ask before you know type of thing so i tried try to be as polite as possible and things like that that's rare though you know what i mean but i just take things with a grain of salt and uh yeah, so it's yeah. Kinda went, um, went with the flow. As you and... say that, yeah. Haley's asked another question. What do you find people, uh, no, sorry, how do you find people treat you? As I know, Tara suffers quite a bit with rudeness when she's in her scooter yeah um i i don't find that people are rude um i the, the thing that's really like i guess in general like, I, like where i'm from my city it's a small city of probably about fifty thousand people and i was born and raised here a lot of people know me um because i'm always out and about like i can go into walmart or or a big department store and yeah. i know the cashiers and some of the managers i can go to i go to the gym at least once a day sometimes twice a day but i do take days off and uh, they all know me at the gym the people that go to the gym if they see me out and about town you know they know who i am so i don't find people uh rude directly to myself but i do find that people that use the wheelchair parking spots yeah uh there's a lot of people that use those spots that don't have a sign because we have to have a placard in the window and there's there's a lot of people that will just park there just to let 
you know, with a friend to run into the store to grab something quick and come back. And that's, that really, really irritates me. And I have yeah. gone up to a couple people and then said, Sounds hey, a little you know, more friendly over you know. there. Yeah. And then, then just besides the parking issue. Yeah. I mean, people are, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't find rudeness. Just maybe no. over helpful at times. <laughs> if they want to help not. you, they want to help yeah. you. And then, uh, but other than that, no, just the parking is probably the, the worst, you know, the no, it's worst boundary nice. there is. Oh, that, that is amazing, Shane. Thank you so, so much for doing the interview with me again. And oh, my this pleasure. time it has worked, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of the end of the interview. Um, <laughs> so I hope that you have a lovely Christmas. I will leave your link down so thank everyone you. can go and check you out. Thank you. And yeah. um, thank going? you again so, so much. No, if, if you ever want me back on, I'd love to come back on again. Absolutely, like we'll do that again. And, and I'm, I'm, an open, I'm an open book. I mean, I'll, I, I'll tell you, you know, the way I look at it is if I can share my experiences and it can help somebody, um, I'll, I'll, I'll ask. I mean, I'm, I'm an open book when it comes to anything. So, like, as long as if they can, someone we'll can get, if someone can benefit from my experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Have a merry Christmas. Angie, have a Christmas. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.